Wandering Soup, and we are back once again with another Moving Abroad series from the U.S. If you haven't been following us so far, we've covered Portugal, Vietnam, Thailand, Costa Rica, and a few other places. Feel free to find all the information about that at our YouTube channel, Wandering Soup, and at our blog, www.wanderingsoup.com. This week, we are moving to Spain. Figure we were already in Portugal, we just stay on this side of the world. So Spain was interesting. A lot of good research, a lot of great opportunities out there. So let's get into it. For one of the first things that we discuss when we're talking about moving abroad is what can you get once you get there? What are the rules and regulations? Like how far can you go? How, how much can you succeed, I guess, would be the, the best way of looking at that. And when I think of that, I think of land and business ownership. You can do both of those in Spain. You can do both of those without being a citizen as well. So consider that. Um, land is easy to buy, again, without being a citizen. You do need a financial number. Look that up. Um, and most people who buy homes in Spain do not have mortgages. So if you're looking for a mortgage, do your research in regards to that. In regards to business ownership, you can be done. Um, but... Spain is, um, people are trying to, oh, it's the easiest way to say it. It's going to be a lot of paperwork. It's a bureaucratic nightmare. So expect some time delays, um, some paperwork coming up missing, have everything together, triplicates of everything that you may possibly need, and some things that you don't need, get a lawyer. And you'll be good. It's just going to take a little time, a little effort. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right? Right. Citizenship. There's two things here that you can apply for here when it comes to citizenship. You can have permanent residency. And you can also get citizenship. Permanent residence, you can get within five years. Well, you have to be on the land for five years. Citizenship takes 10 years, and it does include a step of achieving citizen and permanent residence. You may not need citizenship, though. So that's, a, that's the actual good thing about it. So after five years, you'll be a permanent resident. You're good to go. And then you can get into the uh, healthcare system, education system, and things of that nature. So look into it and see which one works best for you. And of all us fellows, you can marry a Spanish citizen. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life, but you can do it. So we talked about so far land, business ownership, citizenship. We're going to get into medical, which I mentioned. Medical is interesting. Spain is ranked seventh in the world when it comes to medical uh, and healthcare, which is great. But primarily that medical system is built for those who are paying in taxes. So if you're an expat, you haven't received or haven't been granted permanent resident status, um, you don't work for a company in Spain, then you will have to pay for healthcare. Look that up, get you find you a great company and you should be okay. Once you become a permanent citizen, I'm sorry, permanent resident uh, or resident, or you become a citizen, then you won't have to worry about it. You'll be paying taxes into the system or monies into this tax system, and you'll have health care coverage. But until that point, though, you will more than likely have to have health care coverage through an, um, a company. Education is going to be almost the same thing as medical care. It is free for those 6 to 16. Uh, and there's different options. There's international schools, there's state-run schools. Uh, do, uh, just, just, just a lot of options. Subsidized private schools. I had to look it up and make sure I was repeating everything right there. So there's options for you and your kids. But if you're not a resident or you're not, you're not a citizen, those it's not going to be granted to you. So you're going to have to put into your budget that you will have to cover health uh, health care as well as education for your children if you have children if you don't this won't concern you don't and that goes into cost of living right all those things that you have to pay for until you become a permanent resident are going to be factors in your budget when you're thinking about moving to spain and europe in general when we were considering moving abroad one of the things that we looked at was we wanted to significantly cut our budget our everyday budget and to me moving to Europe doesn't really do that and the reason why I say that is because the costs are very comparable to living in the United States but that may not be your goal your goal may be I just want um, 
my kids to have a little bit more freedom. I want to be able to walk the streets a little bit better. I feel like this would just be a better environment for me and how I want to live my life. Now, if that's the case, then this is maybe for you. If you're looking at, though, a reduction in um, your budget, this is not the direction I would go in. With saying that, though, some of the cities in Spain are very comparable to the U.S., and significantly lower than some, say like New York City or LA. But New York City and LA are just like comparing apples to mangoes. It sometimes just doesn't work out. So keep that thought process in mind when you're looking at Spain or realistically any country in Europe. Is budget a factor for you? Can you live cheaply in Spain? You can. I'm not saying you can, but you're going to have to lose some of the things that you really like possibly. So, if, it's, if that's okay with you, that's fine. But if budget isn't a, isn't a concern, doesn't matter at all. Move to Spain. You'll have a blast there. Now, we get into what I consider uh, one of the major things. Is Spain LGBTQI friendly? And the answer to that is quite simply yes. Um, marriage is legal. Trans rights. Do I consider it similar to the U.S.? A little bit. A little bit. Uh, Catholics run amok. And when I think when you have a country that is uh, religious-based, there may be some issues. You're going to encounter some things. Um, but overall, do I think it's better than America? Possibly. But is it, and, but then I say that, and I say at the same time that it's very similar. So don't go over there and think that you're going to be super, super free, but you're going to be comfortable. And I think that's about... Spain in general, you're going to be comfortable. I've been to Barcelona. I didn't consider it that cheap. Um, one of the more expensive trips that I took uh, because I, I felt like we were eating out a lot and the things that we were eating out weren't that cheap. Uh, and they're, they're Not cheap. They were very comparable to eating out in America. Um, and the, the lodging that we had there was uh, very comparable to, again, Traveling in the U.S. may be a little bit cheaper, but not by much. Um, and things like that. So, it's up to you. But I love Spain. That was beautiful. I will go back in a heartbeat. I have a friend over there who I would love to visit. And so, yeah, it's going to be great. Go have a good time in Spain. If you go, let us know. If you're thinking about it, let us know. If you don't know where you want to go, and you want to know where to go, send us a message so we can figure out what we're going to move to next. And in that case, we'll see you next week. Peace and love, y'all.